The committee will come to order. The purpose of this hearing is to receive testimony from an array of witnesses impacted in different ways by the crisis at our southern border. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. Good morning and welcome to the Committee on Homeland Security's first official hearing of the 118th Congress. I want to thank all of our witnesses for being here today for this important hearing titled, Every State is a Border State, Examining Secretary Mayorkas's Border Crisis. The homeland, our homeland, faces an unprecedented crisis along our southwest border. This crisis threatens the safety of all American families, no matter where they live in the United States. Criminals, weapons, trafficked persons, and illicit narcotics are pouring across our borders in record numbers. Make no mistake, this crisis is a direct result of Secretary Mayorkas's open borders policies, policies he began implementing on day one. In 2021 alone, the administration eliminated or began to shut down 89 successful border security policies leading to the current chaos. The Mayorkas border crisis is enriching cartels and human traffickers. Violent cartel and gang activity is significantly increasing throughout the United States and illegal drugs continue to pour over the border in massive quantities. The picture you see behind me is of a woman who was raped and scalped by the drug cartels. Her body was dropped at an elementary school in Texas. Today, you're gonna to hear how the cartels move people into our country for a price. And in many cases, that price is paid with forced criminal activity operating from stash houses inside the United States. When the illegal alien trafficked by the cartels refuses to comply, this happens to them. Further, the leading cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 45 years old is now fentanyl. Our country now faces record fatalities from drug overdoses, eclipsing 100,000 deaths, 71,000 from synthetic opioids alone. As a result, families and communities have been utterly devastated. Our first witness today, Rebecca Kissling, lost two sons, Caleb, 20 years old, and Kyler, 18 years old, to fentanyl poisoning in 2020. Sadly, there are thousands of parents, just like Rebecca, who are grieving the loss of their children to this deadly drug. In my hands are letters written to this committee from grieving parents across our nation who have lost a child to fentanyl poisoning. Some of these moms are here today. No parent should have to go through what Rebecca and these other parents went through. I ask unanimous consent to enter the, these letters into the record, so ordered. Last week, along with Vice Chairman Guest and Subcommittee Chairman Higgins, I led a group of members to the border where we saw this crisis firsthand. While touring the El Paso port of entry, we witnessed a car attempting to smuggle illicit narcotics into the homeland. If not for our brave CBP officers, these drugs would have headed straight to American homes. However, Secretary Mayorkas asserts that he has maintained operational control of the border. He has said as much in this committee under oath. He and the administration, and I'm guessing you'll hear this disinformation from some of our colleagues across the aisle today, that fentanyl seizures are up, which they are, and that fentanyl is thus not getting into the country. The implication is somehow that all the fentanyl comes through ports of entry. However, I have here a photo of 232 pounds of fentanyl seized inland, missing the point of it, uh, the ports of entry, bypassing the ports of entry. That's enough to kill 50 Americans. I'd like to also enter this into the record. Unanimous consent, so ordered. Well, here's just one video from a rancher on the border. Let's play the video, please.
What you see here, camera footage of waves of drug cartel runners wearing camouflage carpet shoes, carrying backpacks of fentanyl and other drugs. They walk into the country, go to drop sites, loaded into vehicles, and the drugs are shipped all over the United States. The cartels are very strategic. They neutralize CBP by having mass waves of coyote-paid people overwhelm the crossing sites, causing CBP to thin the rural areas so that they can process the mass waves of people at the crossing sites. Then, the cartels pour across the border. If fentanyl's being stopped at the crossing sites, why has the street price of a hit of fentanyl gone from $95 in January of 2021 to $28 just last month? It's supply and demand, simple supply and demand. And this data comes from sheriffs in my home state of Tennessee, hundreds of miles from the border. Mayorkas was lying when he said he had operational control of the border and the fentanyl is killing Americans. Let me be clear, Mayorkas lied and Americans are dying. Here are the images, just a few images, and I say just a few because there are hundreds just like this. Fentanyl seizures in my home state of Tennessee, weapons, cash, drugs, I'd like to take a moment, too, and recognize the sacrifices of our hard work and courageous, overworked, understaffed, frontline agents and officers who stand guard at our nation's border every day, often in dangerous and unforgiving environments while being constantly villainized by this administration and the hard left. I want to thank the Democrats who, at least in the private halls of this building, will admit this is a crisis. And I want to let the American people know that there are some on the other side of the aisle in quiet whispers who will say it's a tragedy. I just wish they'd say it out loud because this is killing Americans. We must reestablish control of our southern border and take it back from the murderous drug cartels. I'd also like to thank our state and local leaders who have an essential role in defending our nation's homeland, such as our second witness, Sheriff Mark Lamb of Penal County, Arizona. Penal County is not considered a border county. The county is 55 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border, yet the sheriff has had to devote most of his resources not to protecting his community, to but, re to, but to recovering and apprehending illegal border crossers who are being trafficked. This is a direct result of Secretary Mayorkas, who since day one has opened the border to bad actors, including transnational criminal organizations. Finally, I'd like to welcome the third witness I invited, Dr. Robert Trenchell. The president and CEO of Yuma Regional Medical Center, Dr. Trenchell manages the only acute care hospital in the area. As a former healthcare CEO, I know how tough that is in normal times. But in a 12-month period from December 2021 through November 2022, Dr. Trenchell estimates that his team has delivered over $26 million in, $26 million in uncompensated care to migrants. That's an astronomical figure. It's happening all across the country. Clearly, it's worse in his border town. But with 4.7 million migrants who need health care, everyone pays higher insurance premiums, as this care has ultimately got to be paid for. Under President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas, every state is a border state. In my home state of Tennessee, there were 2,734 fentanyl deaths in 2021. In North Carolina, 4,041, 77% of which were fentanyl. And in New York State, there were 4,946 opioid deaths, again, much of which is attributed to fentanyl. All these states are not on the southwest border, but they are severely impacted by the Mayorkas border crisis. All of these states have at least one representative who sits on this committee. This hearing should be a wake-up call for committee members to end the madness and work together to secure our southern border. Our colleagues across the aisle must acknowledge the humanitarian tragedy at our borders and, incre and the increasing threat that the Mayorkas border crisis places on every congressional district in this nation. We are the Committee on Homeland Security. We must secure our homeland now. With that, I yield back and recognize the ranking member for his opening remarks.